Well, hello everyone and welcome. I am JJM Jim. Welcome to a brand new Let's Play series of Civilization VI. I am super excited to start this playthrough. I have played countless hours of Civilization V and I really, really love that game. Civ VI came out and I was sort of uh, into RimWorld at the time, which I'm still very into RimWorld, uh, but I realized that I, I need to try and get into Civilization VI because I've played about, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 hours or so of it and I've only gotten to about maybe turn... 1, 150 maybe. So I'm I'm really excited to dive further into some things late game. Um, this game is so much different than 5 to me. I mean, there's a lot of similarities, of course, to 5, but the things they've done with the districts and that sort of thing, which I'm still totally learning, is... Um, is awesome, and I and I really want to explore it more. So here we are in a brand new let's play. Let's 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 dive into this right away. Um, I started this let's play because I really did want to get back into Civ Six, and this is this is a way for me to do it. So let's go on this journey together. So let's get right into it. Um, I want to play this series as Philip um, from Spain, um, not for any particular reason. Um, I love the, um, the Spanish, and so, um, I also love his decal, his logo's great, um, his logo, I guess his sigil is a, is a more appropriate term. Uh, here are some of the statistics on it, uh, you know, some of these things, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm, I, this is, this is totally feels like a still a new game to me, so, uh, we're gonna sort of deal with these things as we go, but for right now, let's just get into it. Um, game difficulty. Uh, Civ 5, I, the highest I really ever played that I was decent at was Immortal. Um, but you know what? Let's go, let's just go to Immortal to start. Uh, it's gonna be really challenging and hopefully we don't die immediately. Um, but let's try Immortal and see how far we get. And uh, because I want to make it a challenging, I do want it to be a challenge. So uh, let's do game speed just for the, the sake of this. Let's do a, we'll just do standard. Um, city states. I like to have a lot of city states. Um, and so I guess before we do that, uh, let's pick our map size. I would like to have, I think eight's probably a good size. So if we're going to do eight people, I want to have, I always like to have double the amount of uh, leaders, uh, civs, I guess. Uh, I like to have double the city-states. So let's just go with that. I'm just gonna do random leaders for everyone else at this point. Um, standard resources is fine, world age, starting position is fine, temperature, rainfall. We're gonna leave all that standard, because that will, that will be fine. Um, I'm gonna leave every victory on. Uh, normally, when I played a lot of Civ Five, I did a lot of uh, just domination. But I'd like to really explore this game, so and and you know play through this for all of you as well as long as you're exploring it too. So let's let's just dive into this with any of these victories, except I'm going to take score off. I don't care for the score victory, um, and I'm not going to limit the turns by game speed. No turn limit, um, which takes off score automatically, I guess. Anyway, uh, no duplicate leaders is fine. Allies share visibility. That would be awesome. Um, we're going to definitely do Barbarians and Tribal Villages, so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. yeah, okay, so this is eight people, 16 city-states, let's get started. From the first stirrings of life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Thank you. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Yeah, we've got Ned Stark himself uh, giving us our intro, which is great. Also, uh, from Lord of the Rings. I'm totally blanking on the actor's name right now, uh, but he is quite wonderful. And a great, a great, great uh, choice for this game, for sure. Now that I can't think of his name, it's really bothering me. So let's see, we can remove El Escorial. Inquisitors can remove heresy one extra turn. Combat units have a bonus of plus four combat strength against players following other religions. Okay. 
Uh, may form fleets and armadas earlier than usual. Trade routes between multiple continents receive gold for routes for other civilizations and bonus food. Okay. We get some conquistadors. Excellent. Okay. Let's begin. Okay. So, oh boy, man. It has been a while since I've played this game. Uh... I am so excited. Okay, so right off the bat, we have a lot of resources here. We got some crabs, which is great. Some luxury resources. Copper, some citrus, which is awesome. Um, some wheat for some food. I am going to turn on the... No, not lenses. Uh, nope, not strategy view. Do, do, do. Just for right now, I'm going to show the yield icons. I usually turn them off just because I don't... Um, I don't care for them as much, but for now, let's let's leave them on. So, because we're playing Immortal, I don't really want to like move my Settler around, and I feel like this is probably a pretty good start. We will start out with some gold, um, and eventually we'll get a lot of this food, which will be great. And this, this wheat's right here, too. And then we'll slowly expand out to these resources, and I, I would imagine this is probably ocean. So, that's also good. So, let's just, um, let's just settle the city right here. Okay... Because we found it on the on the coast, we get a uh, knowledge of advanced. Uh, or, or, ugh, excuse me, the uh, sailing. We get a little bit of a, a boost to that, which is cool. Um, let's just start. Uh, let's just start kind of seeing what's around us here. There's a marble up here. Uh, more wheat. Okay, we need to choose our production. I think we're definitely going to need to build a scout first because uh, it's just important. You get all the little tribal huts, um, which kind of taken over from the um, ancient ruins, I believe they were in Civ Five. So uh, those give you boosts, and they're just really good to get. Uh, let's start research. Um, hmm. We could do sailing right away uh, and start you know, improving some of these resources, but, <clears throat> hmm, because we did get a boost to it, so this half of this bar is filled up, so normally I believe this would have been 18 turns to sailing, but because we got this boost, because we uh, formed the city on the coast, we, it's only nine now, which is, so it's cut in half, which is cool. Uh, let's do, we can get some early production going, uh, so, yeah, let's just do animal husbandry right away. Let's go to the next turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue. Let's kind of continue along this. I believe this is more coast here. I believe this is like sort of like a cliff formation. So let's kind of just head this direction. And, well, that's fantastic. We already hit some barbarians who are spearmen. Oh, no. Okay, well, we're going to... Probably pull back and around because I do not want to mess with them. Although, there is a tribal hut right there. Which, uh, I'll probably just head in that direction because I don't want to mess with those barbarians. Yeah. Okay. Let's head in this direction. Get this tribal hut. Cool. Three turns to our scout. Oh my gosh. Another scout from Barbarians. He's already gotten injured. I wonder if we could take him out. Uh, not quite, it seems. There's a, there's a tiny little bit of that red bar left. So I imagine we can't, and I would rather just... Oh, nice. Okay, so we get a recon unit already. So we'll have two scouts, which is... Uh, which is actually okay. I'm okay with that. Um, it's kind of nice, actually. So let's just let's take him and head up this coast. See what's over here. I would like to get another city started pretty quickly. Uh, awesome. We already made a city-state. Kabul. Uh, and we have an envoy there. The envoys are sort of like... I don't really know what the equivalent is. I guess it's sort of like the more... Uh, the more connected or the more um, friendly you are with the city-state, I suppose, is sort of the equivalent to, like, the last game. So if you have one envoy, you get two-plus production in the capital. That's awesome. If we get three envoys, and that's... You get envoys by completing quests and things. So that is kind of that uh, that deal. So it's a military city-state, so we will... I imagine they probably... Oh, they just give us production to units. 
Okay, so it's a little different than five in terms of they don't give you uh, units, which is fine. Um, sometimes that got annoying actually in Civ uh, five um, when you would constantly be getting like kind of garbage units from people. Uh, another tribal hut is right there, so that's awesome. Let's head. You know, if we're gonna get that other scout, I'm gonna keep my warrior back here. Um, just close to home base for now. Uh, good, good, yep. Oh, we have a new quest with the city-state. And they want us to trigger a eureka moment for wheel, okay? Um, let's just take a look at our research real quick. Oh, the wheel, we're not even close to the wheel yet. I think that's after this. Let's just take a quick peek into our citizen management. Uh, we're, we're working this tile and this tile. So we have 10 turns into growth. You know, that's cool. I, I, I think that's fine. I think the next citizen we get will probably work this tile then. So that's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, cool. So we have our next scout. I'm going to send this scout. I'd really like to go over here, but... Let's just send them straight north. Let's see what we can get. We're gonna send this scout to this tribal hut and we get military tradition and another barbarian encampment. Oh boy. Some marsh up here. Let's just keep you right here for now. We need to choose production. I'm probably gonna make, I feel like we're, um, hmm. I could do a monument but at the same time, I feel like because we have these two barbarian encampments right next to us that they're going to keep sending people at us and we're going to have to take them out. So we should probably start getting some slingers going. Uh, they're only four turns, so that's cool. And animal husbandry was done in four. So we'll be able to... Hmm. Yeah, it, you know, in the beginning game is really hard in terms of what do you do what do you big do you build a builder i know there's some people who have totally like a system plan we're just gonna fortify you uh have systems like you have to build this first and this first and this first and um you know i i just uh i am not that slick i don't have all the answers so uh, i'm gonna avoid that it's hard to know you definitely have to be able to protect yourself, but at the same time, you need to keep expanding, keep building. So let's just run with this for now. Okay, we're gonna go up here. Great, we met Brussels. And Brussels has a uh, quest for us as well. Inspiration moment for the early Empire Civic. Okay, well, Brussels is a production, um, production city-state. So they give us two plus production in the capital when producing wonders, buildings, and districts. That's very handy. Thank you so much. Uh, run this guy through here. Let's get that guy's turn. And okay. Awesome. <laughs> we do we are getting a lot of gold right now which is going to help us later. Okay. Um, well, not very much movement here. That's kind of a crappy little turn there. Um, not either here. We're going some th through some thick, thick rainforest here. Yeah. Okay, we'll get a slinger in one turn, and then I think we'll also get animal husbandry. If there are no dogs in heaven. And when I die. Okay, so we got animal husbandry. Uh, which means now we can create a, an encampment on this deer resource. Uh, irrigation to do these, um, to get plantations on these citrus, these oranges here. Um, I should probably go for archery right away because slingers are kind of weak. And we're going to need to do some definite, serious fighting. Uh, but it's tough because I really... It's 18. And I, I bet if I get another couple of those tribal huts or we kill some units that we'll get... You have to kill a unit with a slinger. Which I think we'll probably end up doing. 
So these down here, if you do these things, like we found a city on the coast, so we got a boost. If I kill a unit with a slinger, I'll get a boost to archery, which will basically cut this in half. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a balance game, which I really kind of like. This is new to Civ 6, and I really kind of like it because it's sort of like, okay, if I, if I can do this in less turns than it takes me to research, then that's a win, right? Um, but sometimes you just don't know. We don't, we're not going to do mining quite yet. Uh, although, it's going to be a little bit before we get up there and we have even a worker to, um, or a builder to even um, improve that resource. So let's just hold off on that for a bit. But let's do pottery next. So we can harvest um, wheat. Uh, okay, we have our slinger. And let's just put him right out here just to get a little bit more line of sight around our our capital there. Some stone up here. Okay, uh, we contacted another city-state and we got a boost to political philosophy. Awesome. Hello, Mohendro Daro. They also have a quest. Train a spearman. Okay, well that shouldn't be too difficult. A lot of, a lot of quests here, a lot of things to do. Uh, we can't build a settler yet because we need two population, which we should get in five turns. So I say that pottery's in nine. We can improve this resource. It feels a little too early for a builder yet. Maybe we start boosting our culture a bit and get this monument done or get another warrior. Mm, these are the these are the the decisions. Decision time. Uh, let's just get a warrior. That'll be fine. And let's see what happens with that. We are making some substantial gold per turn, like I was saying. So we should be able to buy some units if we get into like a sticky situation, which we are pretty far from an, the nearest sieve, which is great, actually, uh, in terms of not having to deal with warfare too early. Uh, sometimes you get, you know, there's another sieve right here. Although, I say that now, but uh, someone could already have two or three cities. They get such, the, the CPU gets such a boost uh, from... Oh, I guess, did I tell you to go there? Just fortify right there, please. Uh, so, we've already hit coast up here already. So, let's just kind of head down this way. <clears throat> and... Um, I don't like too often to, you know, I, I I prefer if I can, especially early game, to not do like this sort of a deal. Like, okay, go there in four turns. Just because sometimes you can run into some sticky situations where you're caught in between two barbarians and you probably could have avoided it had you not given them so many tasks ahead and then you just, you're not paying attention to them. And, um, we are by the grace of God well, hello, Victoria. Victoria. Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. And soon... Okay, well, that's a little bold, but uh, nice to meet you, I suppose. Uh, we w It's an honor to meet you, of course. Of course, wink, wink. Uh, exchanging information on our capitals is a great idea. It should help promote trade. Absolutely. Why not? Let's be friends if we can. Uh, great, so because we met the civilization, we got a boost to writing. And London's way up here. Okay, so that's, that's pretty far. Um, boy, actually... Um, yeah, that's actually really nice. Okay, so there's London. Great to meet you. Uh, let's go to the next turn. Mm -hmm. Oh, we found another tribal hut. Over here. Excellent. Can't get there quite yet, but let's do it again. And uh, let's hit next turn. Mm-hmm. Some fighting going on over here. The barbarians and uh, Brussels. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue to send this guy uh, north-ish. <clears throat> oh, I wanted that. Actually, we could probably take this guy out. Let's do it. Knock him out. Don't kill the dog. Just let the dog run away. Or we can junk and join us. Oh, hey oh. Plants and organisms that make shells. There we go. Think of it as a building block. 
Okay, so we found our first natural wonder, the Great Barrier Reef. And that is going to boost astrology. Heck yeah. All right. So let's get this good E. Oop, I can't. Um, cool. So we got the Great Barrier Reef. Boy, it would be nice to... What am I doing here? Nope. Cancel that. Um, there's fish here too. This cliff is good. So the cliff thing is kind of new too in Civ 6. Uh, haven't... I'm not quite entirely sure ex exactly how the, the numbers all work. Um, but the appeal is breathtaking, which I believe is just a boost to sort of like your your citizens uh, and their mood or something. I'm not quite sure of that either. Uh, if you if you have any advice on this, please leave leave some feedback in the comments. I would love to know if if there's some uh, some details on all this stuff or what you all have experienced playing yourselves. Um, and the defense modifier is six, so that's like the highest I think you can get. So basically, it's just a little bit harder to attack the city, or maybe they get a, a negative. Um, maybe if a ship is like attacking your city, they get a negative. Uh, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Like a negative thing against your uh, capital. Kind of like when you're like up on a hill and you're battling someone on a lower hill, you get a better uh, modifier. I guess is the right word I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, we'll get that next turn. Kind of be nice to put a city up there, although it would be really far from our capital. Although we should expand pretty quickly. It would be kind of nice to just sort of give a little buffer here around our capital. Uh, you know, and then we have some city-states in between us. It would be great to befriend some of these city-states and just even a better buffer there if we ever go to war with someone. Uh, let's... This looks to be coast. Keep moving in this direction. Oh, great. Nan, Nan Madal? Is that maybe how you say it? I'm not sure. Uh, they have given us a new quest, Trigger and Inspiration for Foreign Trade. Okay. Uh, awesome. Our unit is up for promotion. First, I'm going to get the, this tribal village first. Oh, we just got gold. Okay. Well, every little bit helps. I will promote you. Oh, I can do that still now. Great. Um, the promotions are a little bit different than they used to be. Um, it's just kind of a different layout, and, and they sort of... They kind of give, a, essentially, from what I remember, similar um, boosts to things, but... Uh, we're running in a lot of rainforest terrain around here, so let's just do the ranger promotion. And that will be good. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we got Code of Laws, which... So now, this is also new and um, in Civ 6, and this is something that I've still been playing around with a bunch. I haven't... You basically get different governments um, as you advance throughout the game, and you get basically, like, different... Um, oh, i got to go back into that. You basically get... Uh, Oh, well, this is a civics tree. So you basically get more, you can add more um, different types of civics, like economic and military, and these are to get great people, and then you also have um, random ones. Not random, I guess. Uh, you get diplomatic ones, and you also get like wild card slots eventually. So we need to choose a civic. Um, let's go for foreign trade. Let's go for foreign trade, just because we we, we can get that boost from um, from them, uh, from that city state. How do I get government? Okay, here we go. So change policies. There we go. Okay, so I get a military policy slot and an economic policy slot, and then like I was saying, there's diplomatic and then wild cards. So you can use anything there. So for our military, I would like to do the five plus unit combat strength when fighting barbarians because we're going to be doing a lot of that apparently and for now just to get some stuff moving quicker i'm going to do the plus one production in all cities this is also good especially if i want to ensure that i get a religion you know what with the spanish 
super Catholic. I'm going to have to switch these out. It makes, you know, we can always switch them when we get, um, we can always change our government at different times. I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember quite when you can do that, but let's try this. I usually always do this one, but we are the Spanish. We are a heavily Catholic uh, civilization. So that makes, let's, let's just set this. That makes the most sense. Historically, I suppose. You know? What would Philip do? Okay. So we can get a settler now because we do have two, um, two population. However, we could set up on this. It's wheat, wheat. Some fish here. This would be a nice little cliffside to get a nice defensive modifier. Although this marble and incense would be really good too. Also building next to a mountain would be great. Oh, I wonder if this encampment was taken out. Oh, that's kind of good. There's just this one over here. Hmm. Yeah, it's that's that's so tough. It's just hard to know what's what's the right answer. Four turns to pottery, and then I can improve this wheat resource. Let's get a builder. Let's get a builder. So in five turns, we'll have a builder. And uh, that will, I'm gonna take this slinger. Uh, actually, I should probably go over this way. I'll go next turn. All right, we'll head, let's head back down. Let's see if we can clear out some more of this down here. Let's see what else is down here. Um, <laughs> uh, let's go here. Okay, a little bit of a clearing. Let's keep your turn. Um, yeah, so we'll get a builder in five turns. We can start improving some resources and then that will speed up our production a little bit more and then we can get a settler. Because we're on turn 15, it would be nice to have a settler by turn 30. Yeah, that would be really nice actually. I wonder if I should go in this direction just to block off. Let's see if I can put a city here to sort of, you know, block off this, this area a bit. Although a couple cities on this coastline up here would be awesome. And the Great Barrier Reef would be super killer. We'd also get marble mm, and stone. We could steal these tiles with some um, districts later. Or the uh, military encampments. Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Come on, Slinger. Let's go up here. Let's clear, let's pretend to, pretend. Yeah, let's pretend to clear the encampment. No, let's actually clear it. A lot of rainforest too. A lot of food production. A lot of food. Yeah, that, that should be, that could be our key there. Let's head down this way. Another tribal hut. Is it a tribal village? I guess it is. Uh, that will be good. We'll do our next turn. <laughs> um, I don't know if I like the sound of that. What was that again? Okay, that, that is still there. And they have a spearman in there. Uh, but what was that sound? Okay, let's head that way. Uh, Uh, it's not attack. Was there another tribal hut? Or was that a barbarian cannon? Hmm. It didn't alert me, so I'm, I was confused by that sound. See? Boom. Look at that. See, now we're going to get boost to archery, which is great. So I'm wondering, because we got a boost to archery from that, we can still kill this unit with a slinger. Would it complete the research? I don't know, but let's find out with this uh, encampment, and that will be something that we find out uh, next time. I think that will be the end of this episode. Um, thank you for watching the very first episode of this brand new Let's Play. Uh, 
just even just doing this episode, I'm super excited to get back into this game, and I hope you are all willing to to climb on board and let's try to conquer the world here. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you in the next episode. Thanks. Bye.